Pereira is going to see Yes, yes, Kevin Pereira on Candace Bailey. <laughs> Candace! <laughs> and a little Poison Ivy cosplay yes, for tonight. That's huh? right, for lead up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're coming to you live from the G4 studios in Los Angeles. Yes, and on today's show, magician extraordinaire and master BS detector, Penn Gillette is here yeah. to tell us about his new run on Celebrity Apprentice. And cross your fingers, he might reveal the secret of Trump's comb over. Oh. 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 oh, look at you. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't watch that. I don't know what he looks like. So. <laughs> then in Galactopedia, we learn how. Oh, is it going to just hang out like a? Yeah. Like, like it's my new helmet. All That's right. Fun. In Galactopedia, we learn how scientists are planning the end of the world yeah. and what we're learning from a newly found are we waterlogged for that? planet. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Plus, wait, can I get it? What do you want, the trumpet? Yeah, I want my toupee. Fire the audience. <laughs> Plus, Kelly Beckett talks to the cast of the new movie Project X. Yeah, Find like out a, what it like looks like. It just looks like a bad mullet. Like it looks <laughs> like you have the party in the front and then the business is in the back. It's a little, it's a little low right it's now. It's good. Uh, Find out if you really need to destroy a city block in order to have a good house party. And we will get our hands on the new Toshiba Portage Ultra Bucket Ooh. gadget prod. Ooh, it's still there. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of power in that little guy, but we will have to wait and see how it rates. Hey! Hey! You want to hear something awesome? Yeah, yeah do I? Tease us, Sarah Underwood. Oh, oh, you want to be awesome. teased, do you? Well, how about yeah. this for a tease? The release date for the highly anticipated game Bioshock Infinite has been revealed. Oh! What is it? Are you teased? Like May 13th? I'm not telling. April 7th. It's just a tease. June 14th. Don't so you know what a tease is? I'm teasing October you. October 30th. Plus, Avatar <laughs> director James Cameron and billionaire Richard Branson are racing to the bottom of the ocean. Whoa. All that and more later in the feed, and you've just been teased. Thank you, Sarah. You're such a high tease. I'm a like tease, just, Kevin. I feel like you have just been gouging my eyes out with that tease. <laughs> was I doing that? It was yes, really high. Yeah, this is how you do when I talk about teasing. I didn't know I was doing it. <laughs> go. Thank okay, you, yeah, Sarah. Uh, time now to run down the top five things on the web. We're going to go around the map. <laughs> Who's going to be competing at a BMX event in the next X Games? Who? I, I don't know at all, but uh, uh -huh. definitely not this guy. I still wouldn't be that impressed. Yeah, I think we need to update the big board of things that will not get you laid. I think <laughs> let's it's time. do it. And let's add some BMX trickery to that, please. And there it is. <laughs> More than two teddy bears. <laughs> Spaceship schematics. Man, I've been and collecting the, those for nothing. And the word bro. <laughs> Who yeah, that, knew? Bro, look at my Millennium Falcon blueprint. Mm. You have to say bro twice, though. Bro, bro before and bro Bro, bro, after. you got to bookend it with bro, bros. Bro, bro, yeah. I don't know you anybody that actually like that. says bro. I hate dude. Dude, what? I don't like, I don't hate dude if you say it once, but if you're like, hey dude, what's up dude? How you doing dude? <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> I've heard people, Who I don't know, I've that? heard people talk like that before and I'm like, oh, stop saying like dude. Like in an animated series? No, just somebody in I don't know who it was. It was just someone I heard on the phone. Somebody you, you a random stranger dialed you, and you're like, I don't like the way no, you talk, bro. He wasn't talking to me. Oh, you're just, okay. He was on his phone. Anyway, it. so okay. maybe it's not that good of a story. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move to number four. And at number four today, a clip from the nation's best source for fake news, the Onion News Network. Yes, we all know that Rick Santorum isn't a fan of gay people, but the Onion mm -hmm. thinks they figured out why. You might even say they've, uh, I don't know, gotten to the bottom of the Santorum problem. Presidential hopeful Rick Santorum, a staunch opponent of gay marriage, launched a bold new coalition today called Americans Protecting Marriage from Homosexual Jerks Like Nicholas Wiseman. In an interview with the Boston Beacon, Santorum said, quote, gay men like Nick Wiseman are endangering the institution of marriage in this country by breaking the hearts of men who have done nothing but love them with their entire souls just so they can run off with some stupid muscle-bound slut. He's certainly being very aggressive. Just look at the barrage of tweets that he's written today. Right. For instance, he tweeted, quote, gay 
marriage isn't natural, and you know what else isn't natural? Getting engaged to someone just because he has nice pecs. Okay. He gave a speech in Ohio earlier this morning. You could tell how deeply he cares about the issue. He just cried silently at the podium for 15 minutes straight, and then locked himself in the bathroom for several hours. Okay. <laughs> Thinks about gay sex way more than actual gay men do, right? Like, that's pretty apparent. Is it? Yes. And personally, I approve of using political action to settle personal grudges. I'm all for it. Is that why you've been going to City Hall so much? Yeah, that's where you introduce legislation to have all Portuguese men neutered. That's where else, <laughs> where else are you gonna go? Why? Because of your dad? Yeah, look, I couldn't escape the shame, but I can spare future generations. <laughs> that's so brave of you. Thank you. Yeah. Give it up for Kevin, everyone. Please. Please, just a man. <laughs> you are just a man. Today's number three is the leaked trailer for a hotly anticipated comic book movie. Ah, uh, yes, we were actually able to snatch it before the movie studios took it down off the interwebs. So here's your first look at Zack Snyder's Superman. Come on, pal, let's go. Bam. I need a little exercise. Take that, pal, and that. Pal. Let's see what you can do. Good night, sweet dreams. So sorry to mess up your plans, but now you know. Splat, pow, don't fool around. Bam, Zow, with Superman. It's actually ABC's 1975 ultra campy adaptation of the musical It's a Bird, It's a Plane, It's, it's Superman. Superman. Yeah. Which is, uh, by the way, a real thing that really existed in the 1970s because <laughs> that decade was full of the cocaina. <laughs> Lots of it. Now, we know that the attack audience loves this sort of high kicking dance action and spirited no, crooning. Don't. Yes, they do. I don't like that at so all. So now I mean, it's Kevin's fine. gonna perform his very own tribute number. <laughs> he has been working so hard on this. Come on, Kevin, no. you can do it. You can do it. No. Come on, no. Kevin, it'll be fun. No, thank you again, but no, uh, we're good. Let's move it on to. Well, hey, Superman, what do you say? <laughs> yeah. so I'm not doing it. No, I'm no, not doing it. Sparkle Lantern I'm choreographed not... an entire number for you. Come on, Kevin. No, kill the music. Come on, Kevin. Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. Come on. Uh, Kevin, like we practiced. Come on. Guys, no, Come I'm on. not doing it. Thank you, but no thank you. You never had the magic. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Right. Move it on, please. <laughs> and at number two today, uprooting a tree the old fashioned way. Oh, yeah, with your crappy car. Stalingrad tune-up. <laughs> My mechanic did one of those for me a while back, the old Subaru. What could that have possibly fixed? <laughs> Candace, if you knew of a better way to fake accident damage for a fraudulent auto insurance payout, I would be happy to hear about it. <laughs> but if you don't, I don't. Let's not ask too many questions, all right? Okay. Okay. Got it. Still ahead, we have a classic clip that comes out of the old AOTS vault. We have one. Yeah! That dog has its day in our number one ATM. We share a vault with Disney. We do do it. Disney vault. Absolutely. Oh, what fun and other stuff, but even the web sometimes runs dry, and today there was no great video that just floored us. It's true. Uh, we're just being honest. Listen, I mean, we could have shown you the video of the moron who lit his hair on fire, uh, and then uh, ate flaming Doritos, uh, and I don't mean the flavor, I mean Doritos that were literally on fire. What is he doing? But I feel like if we, if we really show, just don't show it anymore. I feel like if we show it, I'm gonna, we're just sort of rewarding him for his douchebaggery. Yeah. So we, sh yeah. Yeah, that's enough. Thus, today's number one is one of the web's best clips ever. Welcome back. Dog butt face. Oh, 
It's a little bittersweet because Dog Butt Face is more than likely dead by now. Let's be honest. That's an old clip! But at least all Dog Butt Faces go to heaven. They sure do, Candace Bailey. Yay! They sure do. <laughs> to get your daily viral fix and to check out all the viral videos we have to offer, go to g4tv.com slash It's a beautiful URL. The universe is constantly trying to kill us, but now scientists are farting back with science. Yeah, that's what they do. Here comes Galactopedia with more science. Hollywood has always taken ideas from the world of science for its plot lines, but recently their roles have been reversed. In the movie Armageddon, a massive asteroid threatens to destroy Earth, and it's up to a ragtag drilling team to blow it up with a nuclear bomb. Pretty far-fetched, we know. Except that scientists at Los Alamos Lab are actually drawing on the film for their latest project. They're using a supercomputer to simulate what would happen if we were forced to use a megaton atomic bomb to stop an incoming comet. In order to simulate the event, scientists needed state-of-the-art computer technology that required an unheard of 32,000 processors. The good news is, experts estimate that a megaton blast on the surface of a 500 kilometer long asteroid would be enough force to prevent a global catastrophe. So I guess we won't need Bruce Willis's help after all. We all know what a solar eclipse looks like, but just last week we got one of our first glimpses of one from outside the Earth's orbit. The partial eclipse was captured on film by cameras on NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, but the eclipse wasn't the only thing caught on camera. The SDO was able to capture shifts in color on the sun's surface. Scientists can use this footage to better understand the sun's behavior based on the varying temperatures found in different locations. NASA says these features would normally not be seen by an observer on Earth because layers of temperature are invisible to the naked eye. Way to go, space camera! Finally, we travel from our solar system to one more than 40 light years away. Astronomers have discovered a planet unlike anything they've ever seen. There are three types of planets in our solar system, terrestrial, gas giants, and ice giants. However, this planet is an entirely new class of planet made of water. Named GJ1214b, the celestial body is a genuine water world consisting of over 50% H2O by mass and is surrounded by a dense atmosphere of water vapor. The exoplanet was discovered by the Hubble telescope a few years ago, but only recently had its water-based nature been measured and verified. But don't book your ticket to Waterworld just yet. The planet is uninhabitable by humans because of how close it is to its sun. The surface temperature is an estimated 230 degrees Celsius. Not even a post-apocalyptic Kevin Costner could withstand that kind of heat. From comet bombs to water planets, space can be a cruel mistress. Luckily for you, we treat her right. I just hope that that water world is more successful than the Kevin Costner version. Uh, that, nice. that was my favorite movie. Of course it was. <laughs> of course I it was. I loved water world. Did you get every... the commemorative cups at Taco Bell too? No, no? I don't even remember those, but oh, I wish I had. Fire up eBay. Every time I would go to Blockbuster with my family, we would always, e I, I would always either rent that or Stargate. And my brother and sister were like, how many times can you possibly watch How many times Waterworld? did your family let you rent them? I feel like at some point <laughs> they disowned them you. every time. <laughs> Jeez. And I'd like go in my room and watch it. I mean, I, get, I remember jet skis and drinking your own pee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it still sounds pretty good, actually. But that's I, not... I watched it back and it's not quite as good as I remembered it. Of course it's not. It's Waterworld. <laughs> oh, well. Hmm, the news can be boring. It can, but not when Sarah Underwood reads it. I'll tell you that much. That is so true. Thank you, guys. Right now, it's time to start the feed. All the news you need to know. The feed, 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 feed. It's Thursday, March 1st, and here are your top stories. Finally, Bioshock Infinite has a release date. Hey! 2K Games announced earlier today that they're highly, highly anticipated first-person shooter will hit store shelves in the U.S. on October 16th! Yeah. That date will
will be a simultaneous release for the 360, PS3, and PC version, so you better clear your calendars and hope that this one lives up to the hype. For more info, head to g4tv.com slash Bioshock. Now, super cool bazillionaires James Cameron and Richard Branson are squaring. Is this a funny photo behind me? I can only imagine. Um, Richard Branson are squaring off in a high stakes race to the bottom. That's a good one. <laughs> and they're racing for it. That's what I was getting at. Uh, the Hollywood director and Virgin Mogul are both working on expeditions to the deepest point of the Mariana Trench, some seven miles below the ocean surface. Now, no one's made that journey since 1960, which was the only time a human made it that deep. Cameron will pilot his submarine himself, while Branson's Scarlet, supposedly named after Scarlett Johansson, will be driven by fellow millionaire Chris Welsh. Now, if you're looking to put your money on a horse, the consensus seems to be that Cameron will take the gold, even though he's also busy working on an Avatar sequel because, you know, exploring the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean is just a hobby. <laughs> Rich people. Um, apparently, people from Japan don't like being interrupted. Hmm. Researchers in the land of the rising sun have just developed a speech jamming gun that will literally shut you the hell up. What? Yeah, this tongue twister works by recording someone's words and firing them back on a 0.2 second delay. This causes the brain to jumble its words, forcing the speaker to stop by exploiting a very simple principle. You can't talk when you have to listen to yourself at a slight delay. The device is meant for libraries to shush people, so watch out next time you're talking too loud. That cranky old librarian's just gonna blast you with a ray gun. That's kind of neat. Yeah, we should try that. Yeah, I think we're gonna try it. We yeah, are. I think yeah. we should. Yes. That's fun. And finally, Planned Parenthood is giving away 55,000 condoms equipped with QR codes so people can rate and check in where they're doing the horizontal mambo. Yeah. By logging on to wheredidyouwearit.com, anyone can anonymously share where they're bumping uglies by scanning the code on their rubber, and they can even rate their sexual experience on a scale from, eh, things could only improve from here to, amazing, rainbows exploded, mountains trembled. <sighs> That's the highest rating. That's what happens it. when it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the check-ins are aggregated on a map on their site so you can see where everyone's getting busy. But um, my guess is that maps won't have that map won't have too many pins on Utah, huh? Oh. <laughs> I'm Sarah Underwood. You've just been fed. Still ahead, we make magic with Pendulette. Hey! The feed is brought to you by the General Automobile Insurance Services. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the General and save some time. You know, you, you wouldn't think, thank you, Pam. You wouldn't think that famous people would care so much about being fired by old Trumpy, but uh, that's reality TV for you. Could we, could we hire models that looked a lot alike? We can find two fine twins in New York if that's what we want. There's twin modeling agencies. Yeah, but we have to pay them. I know, but we have money. Yeah. How much do they go for? A night? Um, 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no twins that magicians don't know about. We want to do something that we'd never seen in a shop window. I've seen wind machines. I've seen uh, smoke. I've seen uh, I've seen robot movement. But I don't think I've seen twins. Please welcome back Penn Gillette, everybody. Yeah! Twins. Yeah! Twins. All right. Uh, so many, so many questions. Shoot them all to me. First and foremost, you win this thing, right? <laughs> you know, I have no knowledge of that mission. If I did, I would not be at liberty to discuss There's it. There's no way you're losing to Takei or <laughs> Arsenio. There's no way. That's the wonder of the uh, of television, is anything can happen. Right. Well, I'm but surprised you haven't looked anything across can the happen, at Trump. But nothing but the same.
Yes. <laughs> That's a remarkable thing about television. Anything could happen, we don't let it happen. Yeah, nothing we happens. keep it right to the same plot all the time on every <laughs> right. show. But we know in our hearts anything could happen. Has someone has someone come out and told you, all right, in, in this episode for this challenge, you'll be saying these things and you'll Here, be having the, the fight with... Let me with... give you the shocking information Please. on Celebrity Apprentice. This is the shocking information. That I've no been losing so much sleep over this show <laughs> since it first um, air. Everything is completely honest and above board. Really? And that was the shocker when I went in. I went in thinking, I mean, even on Dancing with the Stars, mm -hmm. there's manipulation. There's people, you know, 23-year-old film students trying to get 20-year-old Mormons to cry. That's <laughs> essentially what's going on. <laughs> right. um, will this ruin your life when this happens? <laughs> this is going to be ruining your life. How? How? What if you're the first one voted off? What are you going to do? I'm going to go home. <laughs> no, but it'll be terrible. And, the, and, the, and they're, they're, they're Think all... Think about everybody that will hate you and, and shun you. We're working, you know, they're all working. Uh, exclusively Dance with the Stars, every single production team is working on a documentary about white slavery in Thailand. <laughs> but in order to finance that, right. they make Mormons cry in Dance with the Stars. Right. So um, then what's the, the, the there is no angle with Celebrity Apprentice? Celebrity Apprentice, Apprentice uh, there are the paranoids of Celebrity Apprentice, you know, Dee Snyder and those people who talk about how uh, they're, they're, they're cranking the heat up. They're trying to make us crazy. Right. They're getting our lunch orders late because, you know, that's a lot of what they did in Vietnam to our prisoners <laughs> of the war. Exactly. They, they got their hamburgers late, <laughs> right. you know, and put mayonnaise on them when they didn't want them. Ah! Right. Um, they do everything above board and everything fit. Now, when I first went in there, I thought that these were um, uh, uneducated, mentally defective, narcissistic losers <laughs> that were then manipulated by rich people. Um, oh, I thought you were talking about Trump. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the entire All family. of those things are true, but in addition to that, you have what's called ego depletion. There's been a lot of studies on this. Mm -hmm. If you have someone careful about what they say for five or six hours, their willpower gets tired and they're essentially drunk. Right. So you don't have to do anything to anyone except put a camera on them. And you wait. You put a camera That's on it. them and wait. And we were uh, 16 hours a day, six days a week wow. with cameras on us. And I mean, every car, <laughs> I was just gonna, uh, how great is this? This is a stupid person. <laughs> I was just gonna demonstrate to you what it felt like to have cameras on you when there are cameras on us. Yeah, this, this is what, this is what it feels like. Imagine so, so, that we're having this conversation <laughs> and there are cameras on us. Okay, Can yeah. you imagine I, what that so would crazy. feel like? That's so crazy, I would have no have idea. Cameras <laughs> um, but uh, it's amazing how easy <laughs> It is. <laughs> Should we just bring them all on just a dog yeah, pile? Uh, <laughs> we, uh, it's amazing how easy it is to speak uh, on camera. I mean, for a professional. Sure. How e I mean, I know some people are terrified of that. But how easy it is to speak on camera for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 90 minutes, two hours, three hours. Right, when you dig into telethon territory. But when you start crying, no, no, not telethon territory. No, I'm talking but, hours. No, no, but, but get that out of your mind. Because telethon, uh, even Jerry in, in, you know, in the 80s left for 10, 15 minutes, sure. other acts were on. I'm talking about you go to the bathroom and the camera stands outside. Oh, that's what we do here. And you open the door, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, but I also <laughs> thought you had the Chuck Berry the camera inside. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, that, that consistent attention, having to watch what you're saying and be metered. And then are you also thinking, what campy music will they put behind this? Will they cut, yeah, well, what cut I, me what with I something also, else? What I also did was uh, every time something was happening in the scene that I didn't want to be on TV, I began singing uh, Hey Jude by the Beatles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Even Trump will never be able to afford this licensed music. And the producers would come out, you know, the underling producers would come out and say, um, uh, you have to explain to Penn that if he sings that, we can't use it. <laughs> and the executive producer went, he knows that! <laughs> That's why he's singing it! He wasn't just obviously feeling like singing right. Hey Jude. Right. Turns out that in my home, by myself, Constantly. never feel like singing Hey Jude. <laughs> Turns out with cameras on me and people saying crazy, crazy stuff, right. the, the McCartney wells up. <laughs> I feel so please. The movement, the movement I need yeah. is on my shoulders. If you just could then. somehow sing "Happy Birthday" and "Hey Jude" at the same time, and a, a producer's oh, head. Oh, but "Happy explode. Birthday" you can buy. Right. Hey Jude, you we just can't, can't buy. We, we can't. No, you can't yeah, afford. We can't it. afford any of it. Right, you can't afford yeah. that, which is why. Which is why we're taking a commercial break so we can get more money to afford it. In the it. demonstration. But we really are taking a commercial sing, break, hey, Penn. We're going to come right back. We're going to really do that. We'll be right back with Penn Gillette. We're going to talk a podcast. We're going to sing even more songs. Song has 
has just finished. Just finished. We're still on so air with Penn Gillette, major. everybody. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, real quick, let's, we'll wrap up the Celebrity yeah. Apprentice discussion. Well, what but I was trying to say to you was, uh, you know, there are people on the show that are professional reality show people. Right. That's all they've done. You know, um, uh, I mean, they've done other shows, but, but the only TV they've really done. Uh, so you've got, like, you know, Aubrey O'Day and Clay Aiken, mm -hmm. and they know how to uh, use emotions. And I think it was Adam Carolla that said it, although he said it was me, uh, is that Adam and I are like barroom brawlers. We're pretty good at being barroom brawlers. Sure. Then we're brought into a ring with professional boxers. <laughs> <laughs> so we're pretty good at all the... You know, ad libbing on television thing. Right. But these people know how to pick someone, boy them up, uh, crush their heart, <laughs> take them down, and they know how to say, "We'll be friends forever after this," which right. they do constantly. And no one has called anyone since the show ended. Yeah, I, was no, say, I was like, I wouldn't believe that. There's no friends forever. I mean, you There's and no Clay aren't forever. even on Facebook anymore, right? Yeah, nothing. No, no. <laughs> it just, and yet they do that. You know, I love you, man. And the most humiliating thing, and you'll see it, in, you know, in a few weeks if I stay on, because I might get fired this week. You don't know. Who knows? Um, but I have to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Clay Aiken. Oh, the, wow. de the decision to marry my wife was a 15-minute discussion. To have children was a 10-minute discussion. <laughs> Over 37 years working with Teller, we've talked heart to heart probably a total of a half an hour. <laughs> Our parents died. I'm having children. Right. Clay Aiken, an hour and a half of what we feel about each other. <laughs> And, this was... and for that, for that, I should be spit upon and scorned for the rest of my life. You had a heart-to-heart -heart talk yeah. with the guy from American Idol. Who prompted yes, that talk? Who prompted it? It was me. What? No. Why? It... I was like, what? Why it was would him. you let him? It was him. How he you wanted him? to talk to me about how I treat people. <laughs> So many members of the Clay Nation right now clutching their hand knit clay I love, dolls. Crying. I love the Claymates. I adored them. <laughs> but he wanted to talk to me about using a condescending tone of voice. <laughs> I don't have anything that isn't a condescending <laughs> tone of voice. My only choice is, you know, is condescending or teller. Right. Those are the two choices <laughs> exactly. we have for speaking. We, uh, I can't. Uh, I cannot wait to. By watch the way, that condescending means to talk down to. Oh, thank you, thank you. I didn't know that. I just want to make sure no, you I appreciate know. it. Thank you. Feel comfortable with that? Um, and explain to me how these cameras work again, please. <laughs> you know, imagine talking with his cameras around you. Is that the <laughs> stupidest thing a human being's ever said on this show? What? No. no, no okay, okay, not, okay. Not by a long shot. Okay, good. Uh, we have Clay's book next week. Um, I want to talk about your podcast. Yeah, now, Penn, Penn Sunday School. Penn Sunday School. Penn Sunday School, where we talk about. Um, uh, well, mostly what we talk about is um, is monkeys, God, and the Supreme Court, which it turns out as my as as I go on through life, those seem to be the three things I care about. <laughs> I will if you're talking about monkeys, God, or the Supreme Court, I'm listening to you. And you don't mean monkeys as in oh we're all primates we may have evolved from them. You mean actual well, monkeys you enjoy like monkey I like, news. I like talking about monkeys, <laughs> but I also do something. I also do something that drives prime primatologists insane in that I like the word monkey better than the word great ape. So when I'm talking about a monkey, I could be talking about a chimp. And it could be a new world or old world tale. I don't care. I like the word monkey. And if you have a monkey on your head, I don't care if it's a capuchin or a chimpanzee, I will call it a monkey. If you are right here in front of me mating with a great ape, I'll probably say, you know, he's screwing a monkey. He's right. Because I, I, I like that better than mating with a great I agree. Ape. When uh, you upset a primatologist, do they get mad and start beating yeah, their chest? They do. They do. They, and do. Come at you. Uh, they, 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 they're silverbacks. They all have silverbacks. So it's, it's uh, uh, monkeys, you said Supreme Court, and then God. God. You like to talk about the God? I sure do like to talk about so what God. So on the podcast, is it, matters. are you preaching to the choir, or do you think there's people listening uh, to you that don't agree with you? Well, you know, there was just a thing put on Twitter, probably one of my favorite things that said, I believe. Believe in God and Penn Jillette. And there are a large group of Christians that like Penn and Teller and mm -hmm. like uh, Penn Sunday School and call in. And the only people I don't understand are people that say they don't care about the whole issue. I love evangelicals. One of the things I learned doing uh, Penn and Teller mm -hmm. after all those years is that um, uh, Christians are really good.
They're really good people. Right. And you can say, you know, you notice there wasn't an anti-Muslim show that we ever did. We did a bunch of anti-Christian shows. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest compliment I can give. The fact that Christians will really believe, American Christians, will really, really believe in the marketplace of ideas. And I love the fact that there are people that come up to me after the show and pray for me and give me Bibles. I never understand the atheists that say it's okay as long as they shut up. They believe that there is eternal life. They believe you can be saved. What could be more hateful than shutting up? I think that the best way to learn you're wrong is to state what you believe strongly to people who disagree with you. That's what it means to be human. That's what it means to, to grow and learn. So I love having discussions with people I disagree with. And I hate Except to call you out on it. I hate to call you out on it. I did not sense any condescension in that tone, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. So. There's a primatologist out there that's very upset. It's yeah. such a pleasure to chat with you. I really do love the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. And it's always a joy to see you. Ben Gillette, everybody. Celebrity Apprentice. Imagine. Imagine. It's at nine on NBC. Don't forget you can see Penn and Teller live just about every night at the Rio in Las Vegas. But now, over to Miss Candace Bailey. It's time to get wasted. Whoa. Project X style. So you know this high school party in Pasadena? Have you seen the footage? Holy sh This is one crazy party. <laughs> Debauchery reigns supreme in Project X when three unassuming high school seniors set out to throw the kind of party where legends are born. To the break of dawn, yo! Why did my high school suck so bad? Why did my high school yeah, suck so bad? Yeah, why did my high school suck so bad? Pretty much suck too, so. I never had a party anything close to this. Yeah, I Either. wish parties were at least a little bit as, as cool as this. Is this big enough to be cool? Game changer. So have you ever been to a party that crazy before? No, no way. No. 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 <laughs> no. I don't think you can talk this party. I think we planned it out pretty well. Maybe my dad's 50th. That was Your quite Your dad's 50th is a rager. My aunt had these wine coolers, and she was off the wall. Yeah. You know, if you go to a party like this, I don't think you can ever beat it. I got another call. I'm sure the neighbors are exaggerating. I heard as well that you gave out flip cams. You know, kids started actually re realizing that we would be using some of this material. You know, like giving us real intimate moments with, with one another and giving us very authentic material. Uh, this is supposed to be a small get together. I wanted to be cool for one night. You know, I wanted girls to notice me. So do you really think girls act this crazy at parties? To a certain extent. I mean, I, I do think there would be a bunch of topless girls at this party. But we got some really hot chicks to be in this movie and take off their clothes, so it's not a big deal. Does it take a party this size to get three boys laid? Well, hopefully not. I mean, I mean yeah. you gotta do that much. Yeah. Just talking about me, so probably. Yeah. yeah. The whole idea behind tonight is to get these bitches to recognize this large-scale bulbs. <laughs> Join the party you've always dreamed of having in Project X and be thankful you don't have to deal with the aftermath. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. And now, important news. G4's hit show, Bomb Patrol Afghanistan, is back with all new episodes starting March 27th. For more info and to join the Facebook community, go to facebook.com slash bomb patrol. Up next, Matt Meyer is here to rate the new super thin and super affordable Toshiba Ultrabook laptop and gadget prod. Stick around. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Warner Brothers Pictures Project X. Witness it tomorrow. On the next Attack of the Show. Actor and rap legend Ice Cube joins us live to talk about his role in 21 Jump Street. Plus, get ready for a movie theater on your face. We review Sony's new 3D TV headset on Gadgetron. And Being Human star and voice of the Clone Wars Darth Maul, Sam Witwer brings the dark side to our studio. Then Chris Gore rates the latest DVDs, including Immortals and Game of Thrones Season 1. And it's finally here! Adam Sessler gives us a lowdown on Mass Effect 3 and Game Break. Coming up next week on AOTS. Let's see how ultra this laptop really is.
Looking for a thin, affordable laptop that can do it all? Take a look at the Toshiba Portage Z830 Ultrabook. With a profile of only 0.63 inches and weighing less than 2.5 pounds, the Z830 will fit just about anywhere. And with power from the latest Intel i3, i5, or i7 processors, and up to 6 gigs of RAM, the Toshiba Portage can handle just about anything you throw at it, and all starting at around 900 bucks. Hey, look, everybody, it's Matt Myra! Yay! On my corner. Ultrabooks are all the rage these days, aren't they? So crazy, you guys. Oh, uh, those Ultra tweens books. lining up outside Hot Topic with their Ultrabooks. Uh, well, they're thin and they're powerful, right? So that's yes. cool. And Toshiba's got, uh, this is the, an Ultrabook here. This is their first one? First is it? time Toshiba's made an Ultrabook. The Portage, right? It's got an aluminum chassis. It's only 0.63 inches thick. Yes, and Not bad. Kevin, you're holding it. It's very light, right? I'd say, I don't know, 2.5 pounds or Whoa, so. Whoa, you read prompter. I uh, interned at a Kinko's. <laughs> I'm very good at weighing. Yeah, it is ha almost half a pound lighter than a MacBook Air, people. That's pretty impressive. Uh, displays 13 inches. Machine itself is only 12.4 inches wide. It's a very sleek design. It'll pretty much go anywhere you want to take it. And mm -hmm. it has ample ports. Get out of here. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Ultrabooks, typically, they give you like a USB port or something like that. Yeah. Maybe maybe two USBs, if yeah. you're lucky, and that's about it. Maybe or something like to get to. Or like a token headphone. Jack. Yeah, that's it. Or something to get you to an external display, but that's about it. What's going on here? This one, the Portage, full of ports, people. Three wow. USB ports. One of them is USB 3.0. Gigabit Ethernet on the back, so you're oh, not nice. looking for adapters. SD card slot and HDMI, Kevin. I think that's really important. This the laptop, obviously designed for travelers yeah. or somebody who's traveling. That would make yeah, a traveler. someone who wants to hook up things, someone who needs Ethernet from But we internet. pretend that Wi-Fi is ubiquitous, that Wi-Fi is everywhere, and it's yeah. not. So to have the Ethernet port right on it is actually kind of a It's deal. not in a La Quintas. <laughs> no, it's, it's a not. hotel. <laughs> no, not a dear Holiday Inn. Uh, yeah. Now, of course, the display is good. HDMI out, so you can add a second sure. display as well. But yeah. what do you think of the display on this thing, though? Uh, the display, it's, it's, it's adequate. It's not okay. the brightest thing in the world. The color is good, though. It's not too washed out. Uh, the viewing angle leaves a little bit to desire. And the construction of the display, it's very, uh, very flimsy, shall mm -hmm. we say, as far as when you're holding it. Yeah, look at the viewing angle on there. It's not great. It's not in-plane switching. But uh, if you guys get a shot of the awesomeness that I'm doing right here, check it out. That's a little, I don't want that moving. So well, much. you are, yeah, you are jostling it quite That's a bit. That's how though. I compute, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> I'm in the La Quintas. <laughs> I need to get on. Are you scared you're going to be murdered? Is that why? <laughs> the La Quintas is coming from inside the hotel. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the keyboard and the trackpad. Low pro what does that mean? It was fantastic. Thank I love you. It. Uh, low profile keyboard. Uh, how is it to type on? Keyboard's not so great, Kev. Oh. Yeah, it's laid out nicely. It's got a lot of room. Sometimes mm -hmm. on 13 inches, it's crammed in there. Uh, but it's a little unresponsive. Mm -hmm. The space bar particularly, I kept missing keystrokes. I, f I physically hit the button. Oh, so it, it, it but the computer, the noise, but computer did not know that. No. And then the trackpad, go ahead and show uh, everybody what's going on. Well, yeah, I mean, so trackpad. what's the, I get it. Yeah, the trackpad's a nice got a frame here around it. Yeah. Uh, this guy here. Yeah, and that's where you want to you wanna tap there, but when you tap, it does oh. nothing. Yeah, that's it an issue. It does literally nothing. You're going to want to, you're going to want to, you're going to feel the button is, well, you're going to feel the button is here. And, uh, and you're then gonna, you're going to click nothing. and hit the metal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, keyboard and trackpad aside, because who's going to use that Not on me. their computer? I don't need either of those things. This review model has an i3 processor. Yep. It's got uh, four gigs of RAM, DDR3 RAM, yeah. by the way, combined with 128 gig solid state drive. Should make it pretty quick. It is, actually. It's a pretty quick machine. Uh, daily tasks like email, browsing the web, photos, all happening very quick. Here's a startup. We started this thing up and got logged in. 20, Whoa! 27 seconds. Zero I had to not type bad. in. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Uh, it's got a 128 gig SSD. That's as big as you can get in this mm -hmm. so far. Uh, hopefully, they'll come up with a bigger one. Also, the RAM, if you're going to order this, get it with as much RAM as you can because it is not user installable. Oh, really? So think about that. Okay, locked into that. All right, yeah. Toshiba's Portage, uh, the one that we're reviewing here, is going to set you back 900 bucks on yep. the old Amazon.com. What is the verdict, sir? Four out of five, folks. Four out of five. Uh, it's a good-looking laptop. It's also the lightest one I've ever tested. Uh, I just really didn't like the keyboard and the trackpad. That's why I docked it. So right. if you can make that a little better, maybe you come back. Are you t talking to Toshiba? <laughs> yeah, Toshiba watches me. Yeah. Just Toshiba. <laughs> just Toshiba. Well, come on back, Toshiba. Thank you, Matt Myra. Yeah. That is it for today's Gadget Pron. If you have a gadget you'd like to see us rate, email us, gadgetpron at g4tv.com. But now let's see what kind of fun can be had at the Toy Fair. What?
Hey there, Attack of the Show. This is Gary Oransky coming to you from the 2012 New York Toy Fair. This is the place to preview the most exclusive games and toys before they go to the public. Let's take a look. I'm here in the G.I. Joe Retaliation booth with John Warden, the lead designer for all of the G.I. Joe figures and toys. John, what do you have to show us here today? We've got some great new items for this movie. We've got the Battle Kata, Ninja Commando, Snake Eyes, and in a touch of a button, oh, he's able to deploy his weapons. Locked and ready to rock. I'm here with Scott Knightlick, the marketing manager for Mattel Inc. So this is our legacy collection. That's Batman from all his different iterations. Comic book, Golden Age, video games, all sorts of different Batman variants. This is our Dark Knight Rises Movie Masters. And if you buy all six figures, you can collect and connect the bat signal with, there we go, it, it really works. It's the coolest nightlight you've ever had. I'm here in the Lego booth with the most anticipated set, I think, was recently announced. Yes, it was. It is Lego Lord of the Rings. We have the Mines of Moria and the Battle of Helm's Deep. Uh, we look at the Cave Troll, we have Legolas, we have the Hobbits, we have Skeleton and Chains and everything that Pippin knocks down for when they catch them and the battle begins. I'm here now with a man very well represented in my personal toy collection, comic book artist and toy designer Todd McFarlane. What can you tell us about this year's lineup? People like monsters, and now if you're going to be doing zombies, the question is, other than making them look cool, is what can we do with them? And so again, we want some that their guts pop out, their heads fall apart, you can stab them, you know, around the corner there, we've got the zombie head. In this case, what will happen is you'll have the head, you have to lift the screwdriver up, and inside will be then season two DVD. So that's it for Toy Fair 2012. We saw a lot of cool things from Hasbro, Mattel, and all the other companies. Thank you, G4 and Attack of the Show, for making me a member of the Viewer Army. This is Gary Oransky, and I'm signing off. Peace. expensive microphone. Yes. Do not Chris Rocket. <laughs> if you want to enlist in our viewer army and cover an event for us, go to g4tv.com slash viewer army for more details. It's time for today's epic fail. Hooray! All right. That was the appropriate amount of excitement for it, I guess. In these tough economic times, there are an awful lot of people that are sleeping in the subway. But most of them are smart enough not to sleep here. Epic fail. Oh. 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 Wow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. On the bright side, uh, landing on the third step is a lot better than landing on the third rail, right? Uh -huh. Fail that commute. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, well, that happened. Thanks to Penn Gillette. He was great. Very funny. Great guy. Thanks to Matt Myra. He was great. Very funny. Very funny. Great guy. And Kelly Beckett. She was great. She was great. Very, Very funny. funny. Funny girl. Very yeah. funny girl. And thanks um, to Candace Bailey. I gotta go. What are you doing tonight, I'm Kev? going to lead up right now. Oh my gosh, I do. Oh my god, well, I need I'll to go. See you there. Like, I literally need to go now. So, okay. good night, All everybody. Right. Hope to see you there. Or if this is a Friday repeat, you right. missed it, you jerk. I shouldn't be mad at that. I should have, but I am. No, it's okay. It's all right.